Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture, um, DC 309, Urban Church Planting. We just started off on lesson number two, so let's um, continue from there and we'll take questions shortly. So what we're emphasizing is that in all our work, ministry work, we have to depend on the Lord. So even today, in the time trying to emphasize it, that even today, when things are very comfortable in the ministry, you know, in the early days, usually it'd be very hard. You know, a lot of hard work, you have to do so much. You know, a, a lot of now actually it's very comfortable. I mean, I'm not saying we're not working hard, we are working hard, but there is so much meaning so many people, resources are there, people are there. It could become, you can tend to become very lazy. You can tend to become very comfortable. Ah, chalo, we just go on. But it is in time like this where we have to push ourselves to really lean on God and not depend on our own might or our own strength. You know, So that uh, is something uh, uh, we have to be mindful of and what i want to stress is it is more difficult to lean on god when things are when you have everything than when you have nothing when you have nothing you're forced to lean on god you have no choice but when you have everything i mean a lot of things i'm not saying but you've, you've got all this it's more difficult because now you have to force yourself don't trust in these things don't trust in people. Don't trust in. Don't depend on people. I mean, yeah. Thank, I mean, saying thank God for all the good people. I'm not saying people are. Of course, we count on people and we're giving them responsibility, all that. But don't don't depend on that. Don't depend on money. Don't depend on fame. Don't depend on reputation. Don't lean on any of these. Only lean on God. Go back to the base. Stay with the basics. Read the Bible. Pray. That's the basic. To, to do that, to stay with the basics, in time like this is more difficult than when the beginning. When you're starting, you're forced to do it, you know. So I'm just uh, repeating that. So we have to remember what Jesus said. You know, he said, without me, you can do nothing. What does that mean? It means that even when you can do a lot of things without the Lord, remember, all that means nothing. So you have to go back to him and always ask, Lord, do you want me to do this? Or... Lord, if there's anything I'm doing which you don't want me to do, please tell me, I'll stop it. Because I don't want to be doing something you don't want me to do. You know, so that prayer must constantly go on uh, as we journey. And remember, yes, Chirag, your question. So while you start your ministry, APC here, did you face like uh, any financial problems and all? Hmm. So the question, when you started the ministry, like uh, especially APC, did you face any financial problems? So I want to say this, that, you know, uh, in our journey from the beginning, um, yeah, we've, I'm not saying, I don't, I don't want to say this to boast, but we've, we've not had any financial problems. Uh, there has never been a time when uh, we lacked money. And uh, from the beginning, from day one, I think the reason is, the reason is, uh, and I, the, one of the principles we will learn uh, in this course, will tell you, is always operate from a place of strength. That means... Put yourself in a place of strength and then operate from that. Now, when I say when I say operate from a place of strength, again, remember, we're not saying, you know, we are depending on physical, our own abilities, but God has given us wisdom. So we're using God given wisdom to put ourselves in a strong place so that from there we can operate. And when you operate from a place of strength, you know, you will you'll be able to do a lot more. So uh, So some, so, so some of the decisions, so when I look back, when I look back on this journey, 
I remember the times before we started APC, I used to sow seed. That means I was intentionally, from the early days, from, you know, like age of 13, I used to give money to other ministries. You know, I used to uh, earn little money. I learned five rupees. I'll give, you know, very, so God, I'm sowing a seed into my future. So that is one thing and uh, where in the early days, even, you know, in, in college and other places, to just be faithful to God with your money, to sow seed. Because remember, every time you sow seed, you will get the harvest. It's a bi biblical principle, right? So throughout my journey, and we continue to do that even today, we continue to sow seed, which is give to other ministries, give to other churches. So even today, every year, uh, we give to other missions. But of course, we our own missions is happening, but we give to other missions work, other organizations. It's seed we are showing, right? So uh, what I would say is, you know, you establish a good foundation of sowing seed, giving, because then you will reap your harvest, right? And you also reap your harvest. You also sow seeds, not only financially but also in service. That means you serve other people so that in the future, others will come and serve under you. And so that's a biblical principle. You read about it in Luke 16, where Jesus said, if you are not faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? That means if you want to have your own, you first be faithful in what belongs to somebody else. You serve under somebody else. So I remember, you know, wherever I went, uh, and I'm not saying this to brag or boast, but I'm saying this to show you how you can be intentional about sowing seed. So when I was in college, uh, this was in the US, I was working with a Korean student fellowship. It was a big group, over 300 Korean students. They had their own leader, like they had a president. They had their own system. They would always, every year, they would elect a new president or the fellowship and all that. But I went there and I said, I will serve under, I will serve this fellowship. I will serve under whoever is the president. I will serve. What you tell me, I will do. I will serve. But in my mind, I'm saying, God, I am sowing seeds of service. I will be faithful. I'll serve faithfully. Because one day, I knew I'm coming back to India to start. I said, God, when I start my own, you give me faithful people who will serve like this. Same thing in the African-American church. And now in that church, it was a lady pastor. I still remember her name. She's, I think she's still alive. Uh, she's very elderly now, of course. Her name was uh, Pastor Eloise Bellamy, African-American lady. But I used to serve uh, under, I just go, anything she tells me, I will do. So every Wednesday, I used to teach Bible study in that church, African, I mean, all, all African people. I'll be faithful every Wednesday. Now, for me, I was a student, uh, so it was not easy. I have to be there on time, you know. Okay, I will be there. I will. And the way the African American church, at least there, it was like suddenly Sunday morning she'll call me. I'll be sitting, at a, the worship would have started. They're leading and her office is at the back of the church. She'll send word through somebody. And she said, call. So I'll go to her office. She says, son, do you have a word from the Lord today? And I'll always say yes. <laughs> I'll always, I'll, I, I'm, I'm ready to serve. You know, I'm ready to. Then, Next thing I know, after as soon as worship is, today we have our, you know, <laughs> brother Ashes, they called me up to preach. I had like 10 minutes. <laughs> she gave me only 10 minutes to get ready, but I had to preach one hour. Yeah. But I was ready to serve. So anything you tell me, I will do. Yeah. Sowing seeds of service. Then when we were in another church in Chicago, there was another pastor there was he was pioneering a church meaning he was just starting a small church him and i went there and over there i would go i would sweep the floor 
right? So as soon as service is over, we have to clean up because every time we have to set up and there. So I would time to clean up. I would help in, you know, folding the chairs, putting the chairs back, and we have to clean the floor. I will sweep the floor. Now, outside that church, I had a ministry. You know, people were inviting me to preach here and there. All those things were going on. But in that church, I said, I'll, I'll serve this pastor. He's also a young man. He's also pioneering a church. He's starting a church. He needs help. I will come and serve. I won't, you know, say anything. I'll just quietly I'll serve. So I said, God, and I remember those days when I was sweeping the floor. I said, God, I'm doing this today. One day you give me faithful people who will serve under me. Right? So sowing financial seeds, sowing seeds of service. Right? These are all seeds you sow, and then you'll reap the harvest. You know? So today, if you see, okay, why, why is it that you know, okay, you, you can say that we've never had financial problems. I will say one thing is like, look, we so we sow the seeds, whatever small amount you give, you sow the seed, um, and, and we've not had financial problems. Not, and, I, and, I, and I realize that uh, there's a lot more to this. That means one is, you know, you also have to, uh, for the first four, 13 years, I was working and doing ministry, so we could give a lot of money into the church. Uh, so that was another decision we made when I was working and doing ministry, which helped us. Um, and uh, we managed the money, even now, you know, manage money very carefully. So I, I, I sit with the accounts. Like anything goes wrong, I will think. So, like now, you know, I'm, uh, today also, I'm meeting with our accountant, you know, I just say, okay, I, I want everything. So I, I watch the finances. Even though we have an accountant, we have an accounting firm. Every month I check the reports, I look at the reports, where is the finances? I ask questions. So we have to be also manage the money carefully. If any, if the money is going too much, hey, stop that, stop that, you know? So you also have to be wise about managing money. So all those things will help us financially. Right? So, so the answer to your question is, we have not faced financial problems. We never had financial difficulty, but there are reasons for that. You know, you sow the seed, you walk with wisdom, do the way God wants you to do it, and also be very careful about how you manage the money. Like, don't spend, don't waste money. So I'm very careful. All the ministries, many different ministries are checking, hey, don't waste, don't waste money. Because others, people don't understand how important money is. Huh? But the money is there, I'll just spend. No, 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 no. Check. Yeah? So all those things will add up. Now I understand that uh, this may not be everybody's experience. You know, I know a lot of pastors are struggling or going through difficulties, and, and we try to help others to how much we can. Uh, uh, yeah. Any, any question? Sorry, that was a long answer to this, but the the answer was short. The answer is no, we've not faced. But I'll try to explain to you why. Um, any other questions? Um, another thing I, I want to say this. Um, in uh, in 1992, I, I was a I was a college student then. I went on a mission trip. I, I was a student, and uh, we had uh, Christmas holidays uh, during December and January. And I went on a mission trip. I went to. I went to Eastern Europe, that was uh, to a country called Albania. It's right next to Greece. I went to Albania. Uh, then on that same trip, I came to India. I also went to Malaysia. And uh, then I went back to US. I was ministering in all these places. Um, so that was my first mission trip that I went. But I made a big mistake. The mistake I made was I used my credit card. Okay. And I just charged. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come back. God will provide. I'll come back and I'll clear the money, pay the money. Oh, I have faith in God. God will provide. 
So I went on this trip and ministered in all these places. It was beautiful ministry. Ministry was good. Wonderful things were happening. But when I came back, when I went back to the US, I was in debt. It was very painful. I thought God will provide. I'm doing his ministry. I'm doing his work. Uh, and I, I, I forget the exact amount, but it was more than three thousand dollars yeah, in debt. Uh, it was very hard, and I was a student, you know. So that means I don't have like a big job or anything. I'm earning little money. I'm studying, you know, that. and but that was a big lesson for me. It was painful that that particular trip. Mission trip was good, but when I came back, I was flat on my face financially. And that time, I learned something. It's a very simple thing. If God can pro, if I believe that God can provide after the trip, then why can't I believe God will provide before the trip? So from that time on, that was from after that. After that, I decided everything I'm going to do. I want God to provide before. If you can provide after, you can also provide before. So then I won't fall into debt like this again. I will not do anything in debt. Because that was a very painful experience. It took me a while uh, to come out to clear that amount. It was very difficult. It was a bad mistake I made, you know. But I'm learning, I was learning, you know. But the lesson, the challenge I gave myself was, if I believe that God can provide after, I'll believe for Him to provide before. And I can say, you know, I, 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 without overlooking something, till today, everything we have done, the money has come before we did it. Because the very next trip, uh, in I think a year or two later, when I went, we went to South America, ministering there. First, the money came. Make sure money is in before. <laughs> then, go on the trip. So meaning, I will do it without debt. I won't get into debt. So that is a lesson. Don't... Now, some people may not agree with me, but I'm just giving you what I learned. Don't do ministry out of debt. Or don't get into debt doing ministry. Don't. That was the principle till today. So, example, even now we, you know, in May we bought the land. Full amount is sitting in the bank. Give the give the draft. Finish. No, no uh, sleepless nights. Oh, I have to pay money. Nothing. Money is in the bank first. Then you buy the land. Now we are going to, you know, we're getting slowly. We're getting ready to construct the building. Money is in the bank, so construction can happen peacefully. It's not like, oh, construction started, everybody, please give me, please give money, please give money. If you don't give money, we cannot finish the building. Nothing like that. I, no, no, don't believe like that. First, do it debt-free, without debt. So from that mistake, 92, it was very painful, but I learned the lesson. If God can provide after, He can always provide before. So let the money come in and you do ministry without any debt, debt free. And that's how everything, even, you know, like now when construction starts. So no worry about the money. Money is already there. You build the building, plan, and you plan according to what you have. Like don't plan to spend 100 crores if you only have, <laughs> you know. So we have a budget. Within this budget, you build the building. And within the budget, we make the plans. So no sweat. That's how we should operate. You understand? So don't do many. I, I don't, at least for me personally, I don't believe in going into debt in order to do ministry. Don't do that. Now, I know other people may do otherwise. You know, they go into debt and build buildings and all. But in America, if you see today, very sad story. Many big churches, they'll have big buildings. Almost every church is in debt. 
nice big fancy buildings they'll have big ministries very famous preachers their financial situation is very bad why that you know so many million dollars in debt actually that is the truth in the front everything looks very nice but the truth is they have a big building but they have many dollars in debt so that's why the preacher cannot preach what he wants why if he preaches the truth people will leave the church his offerings will go down so he only has to preach things that will keep the people coming that's the situation of many ch churches western churches they look very nice but the reality is they're all a many church and huge debt okay that's a different story i don't know yeah so like uh, you were doing ministry before also like well, from your school time but like uh, when you start apc like that step is very important so how could like how you took that steps the beginning because some people like uh, the thoughts they have even plans but it's very tough to take the step to mm. build the own church or like uh, to start the own ministry it's very tough to take that step so what encouraged you to take that step and uh, uh, you own mm. or, or like your own ministry good, good question so the question is how you know how did you take the step to start apc right uh, what encouraged you to start? so uh, uh, again here one is there was a definite vision right so the vision to establish a church in bangalore and reach the nation of india that was in my heart from the time i was 15 now, if you ask, how did you get that vision? Like, uh, did some angel come? Did you have a dream? No, no, no. It just—it was just something in my heart, right? And so it was a very simple thing that God put it in in my heart. So that's the first thing. Like, is—is is this something that's really in your heart to do? It must be in your heart that yes, I am called to do this. Right. The second I would point to is history with God. That means like what David said, I have killed the lion, I've killed the bear. Now I can kill Goliath. That means he did small things before. So that's why I give the history. That is right from Bangalore to Manipal to time in the US. We were planting churches, starting ministry. So they were small, they were small, but we learned through them. That was like killing the lion and the bear. You know, the small things you're doing, it's giving you a history, you're understanding, oh, this is what goes into starting a ministry, you know, and every time you do it, you're gaining confidence, you're, 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 you're more tuned to God. So build your history with God in the area in which you want to do ministry, you're, you're going to start. So because I did it many, I've done it many times, and I've learned through those mistakes, that history with God, killing the lion and the bear, is preparing you to kill Goliath, right? Uh, so that history with God. And third, I would say, was preparation. That means when we were in the US, we were studying many churches and studying how the churches were running. You know, so uh, we eventually, I mean, I looked at many, many congregations and all that, but eventually we looked at, um, there was a there's a very nice church, uh, of course, in those days. Today it's quite different, but those days uh, uh, there was a church that we really liked, uh, which was uh, Victory Christian Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, pastor Billy Joe Doughty was the pastor there. Today his son is running it. It's changed quite a bit, but but in those days it was a very mission-minded church. That's what I really liked about that church. There's a big church. They had yeah, those days were more than fifteen thousand people, um, and um, they had a Bible Institute where they should train people, and they were reaching out into many countries, many nations, and they would go start churches. They would plant churches, and they would also start Bible colleges in those countries. So, uh, I really liked that model. Oh, so we'd study, oh, of course, from, from a distance, you know, as we'll try to see. And we visited that church maybe two or three times. We went there. 
to say, okay, how are they doing? How is the church? How are they doing the ministry? You know? So that was part of our preparation, like looking at churches that are doing the kind of work that you want to do. Especially for, for me, missions was a big thing. Like, how do you reach people? Like, you don't want to be a church just by yourself, but to plant more churches, you know? So I was trying, how are these people planting more churches? And they were planting in other countries. And so just studying them, looking at the example, observing, you know, watching. That was part of the preparation. You know? And then ultimately, it's a step of faith. So when it came uh, down to, you know, saying, okay, it's time to go, 1998, I told Amy, it's okay, we are going to prepare ourselves. And by, we set ourselves a time, December 2000, we will go by that year. So we set ourselves a time. We have about a little over a year to prepare ourselves, get everything ready, go. That was a step of it. You just have to do it. You know, uh, did some angel come and say, you have to go? Or, no, no, nothing like that. Just make a decision. Time has come. I know in my heart, time has come. Let us go. Take a step of faith. So, yeah, these are things that you know really helped make that decision. You know, so it wasn't uh, uh, an abrupt decision. It wasn't suddenly making a decision. But there's a journey to it, right? That you come to the place where you can take that decision to step into uh, and start a ministry of a church. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Let's go back. So today it's been a lot of stories. But... All right. So another important thing is keep in mind that all increase comes from God. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul, you know, he's talking about his, in the work he's doing, the work Apollos is doing. And he says this, he says in verses 6 and 7, he says, uh, of course, he's comparing, you know, uh, talking about Paul and Apollos. And then he says, I planted, verse 6, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So twice he's saying, God gave the increase, verse 6. Verse 7, God gives the increase. So this is very important to remember that our increase comes from God. So uh, of course, in the natural, there are things we can do. For example, today, uh, you know, uh, at ABC, there are lots of things we will be doing to reach more people, to let people know what's happening, to reach out, so on and so forth. You know, uh, whether it's evangelism online or through digital media or so many different things, we're reaching out to people. Yeah, we can do all that. But increase comes from God. And very important, we must desire only the increase that comes from God and not the increase that comes through our own efforts. See, if I want, or if we want, we can go just, come on, all of you come Sunday morning, we'll give you lunch, and we can bring 1,000 people, put them in the service, and say, see, we have so many people sitting. But that is not what we want. Right? We don't want just numbers for the sake of numbers. We want increase that comes from And so that also is very important because then you don't get into competition with other people. You know, uh, that, okay, that church has so many thousand people. That church has so many thousand. That church has so many thousand. I also want to have so many thousand. No. Why? Right. Let God give the increase. And let the increase come from God. And one of the things we will learn in church planting is every church has a certain calling right so stay true to your calling so if you say at APC 
our focus, our emphasis is to equip the people. We're not entertaining the people. We have to equip the people. That's our focus. Equip believers, equip other churches, equip other ministers. That's our focus. So some people, sometimes people get upset with us, you know, like, uh, you know, your messages are very heavy. Like even our feedback, you know, people give feedback. Your messages are like Bible study. They are so heavy, you know, can't you just preach something very simple for simple people? Okay, there are other churches that do that. That is not what we are called to do. We are called to equip the people. That means to equip you so you can do the ministry. If you want something like ice cream, somewhere else. You, know, you want solid meat, come here. Equip you for the ministry and encourage people to do the ministry. So every church, every ministry has a certain calling. That's what God's called them to do. So stay true to your calling and let the increase come from God. In that, let God give the increase. Otherwise, you know, we will try to be everything to everybody. And you can't be everything to everybody. I remember some people came and gave feedback. Pastor, you never say hallelujah on the, from the pulpit. Pastor, you never, say, you never speak in tongues from the pulpit. You must say something. Why? Because they are used to that kind of, you know, where they will, people will say after every sentence, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here we hardly say hallelujah. <laughs> so they are expecting that. Okay, sorry. If you want that, some other church will do. You can go somewhere else. But here, you have to stay true to what God has called you to do. Right? So just because somebody wants me to say hallelujah, I'm not going to simply say hallelujah so that they'll come back. No. You can go somewhere else where they say hallelujah lots of times. Right? Or, Pastor, you must, you must speak in tongues from the pulpit. I'm trying to hold the mic, speak in tongues. Why? I speak, I pray in tongues for hours in my room. That's enough for me. I don't need to come and do a show from the pulpit. I speak in tongues, but I speak in hours at home. When I come to preach, I'll teach the word. I don't have to speak in tongues to make you feel happy and get you coming back every Sunday. I, that is not, you know, that is not the thing. But these are the kind of feedback people will give you. But you need to know what is your calling and let increase come from God. Don't try to create your own increase by pleasing everybody. That won't last. You stay true to your calling. Right? You don't have to please everybody. All these small, small things people will say. Right? So remember, increase comes from God. And you stay true to your calling, be faithful, and let God give the increase that He wants to give to you. Let Him give it. Okay? And um, remember that uh, we are gathering fruit. No, we are gathering fruit for eternal life. And if you want eternal fruit, you have to engage with eternal means, means with, with God given means. Right? We can't use natural means, just our own human effort, to gather fruit for eternity. Right? We have to use eternal means, divine means, divine methods, in order to get um, eternal fruit. So Paul writes about this, you know, in First Corinthians chapter three, uh, verse twelve to fifteen. He says this. He says. Uh, if anyone builds on this foundation, so the foundation is Jesus, how you build on it, we have to be careful. If anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. That means he's saying, you know, you're building on this foundation. You can build with gold, silver, precious stones, or you can build with wood, hay, and stubble. So wood, hay, and stubble represents things of the earth, the flesh. Gold, silver, precious stones, things that are eternal from God. So if you build with what's eternal, it will stay. If you build with what's man-made, it will be burnt up. Right? 
So we want to build with what comes from God, with what is eternal, with those things we want to build. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. So now let's just look at uh, the book of Acts and just give you a quick overview. I know we are studying the book of Acts uh, right now. But when you think about what happened in the book of Acts, in uh, Matthew 28, Jesus gave the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. He said, go and make disciples of all the nations. He said, give the Great Commission. And the only thing he told them was, you wait for the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 47 to 20, 49. He said, you are witnesses of these things, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from above. So he said, you are witnesses. You go make disciples. Go with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's all he gave. He didn't tell them the methods. He didn't tell them one day you're going to plant, all of you are going to plant churches. Uh, everywhere you go, you will start churches. All he didn't tell them. Right? So he only told them, go make disciples. You are my witnesses. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So they went to Jerusalem, they waited, and after the Holy Spirit came, they started ministering. And what happened? Starting from Jerusalem, in every other city where they went, they were actually planting churches. Right? There were communities of believers. People got saved. They started fellowshipping with each other. They started meeting every week. They started learning the scriptures. They started worshiping together. They started praying together. And so eventually, every place, what happened? There was um, local churches being established. Right? So uh, this is something we see uh, happening throughout. Uh, are we using the same notes to, uh, that, that you have? The printed notes are the same as PDF? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Right. So, when we establish healthy local churches, right, then the Holy Spirit can cause multiplication of those healthy local churches. So, you plant healthy local church, then what happens? That church will start multiplying. So part of uh, health, if you have, you know, is is multiplication. You're pl planting other local churches that are that that are happening, and we see that, you know, and I'm just going to go through this quickly. Uh, sometimes uh, people are sent out because of circumstances. On page four, right? Uh, because of circumstances, they they are sent out. Um, uh, sometimes we impact influential people and they go and impact other places, other areas. Uh, mu multiplication can happen that way. Uh, mu number three, multiplication can happen because yeah, there's a specific word given to a leader. Uh, multiplication can happen through social re relief work. Is it in your notes? Or oh, these are not in your notes? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let, okay. Let me. Uh, I just. I think I added this later. Okay. Uh, so uh, multiplication of the local church can happen through many, many different ways, right? Uh, and um, it can happen through uh, through a word that God gives to a leadership team. You can raise up new leaders, and uh, also the Holy Spirit will direct us into. New mission fields. Okay, well, let's let's leave that aside here. Um, so the main thing uh, in lesson number two, the main thing I want to emphasize is that we need to listen to the Holy Spirit uh, as we go out to plant and start churches. Okay, all right. So I think in in my own notes I added those points there, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. 
All right. Let's go to number uh, chapter number three, definition and objectives of church planting. That's there, right? Lesson number three. Okay. Okay. So in church planting, what are we talking about? We are talking about establishing communities of believers. So when you talk about a church, uh, obviously we're not talking about a building. We're talking about communities of believers. And our goal is for it to be self-sustaining. That means it should be able to continue on its own. Okay? So if, for example, if that church is going to meet only if I am physically present, and if I'm not there, the church doesn't meet or the church cannot continue, then it's not self-sustaining. It will close. If I leave, it will stop. It hasn't reached the place where it can be self-sustaining. So our goal is when we want, when we start a ministry, we start a work. We want something that will continue at least for one more generation and if possible generations beyond that. that the work must continue. That it should become uh, self-sustaining both in terms of continuing and also in terms of multiplying. It should multiply and it should be able to, uh, the, the, the work should be, you know, we should be able to plant more churches. Okay. So that's our goal. That when we plant a church, work towards this, it should become self sustaining. It should be able to continue on its own. It should be able to multiply uh, and, and keep going, even when the person starting the work is no longer there. Right? And you think about the Apostle Paul, he went to many places, he started churches. In many places, you know, he, he was there only for a short time. Now, of course, in Corinth, he was there for about a year and a half. In Ephesus, he was there for three years. But most places, very short time. But the work he started continued. He appointed leaders. He trained leaders. He appointed them. And the work continued. So... Uh, we need churches, we need to establish churches that will be self-sustaining in leadership. That means leadership must continue generation to generation. They should raise up more leaders. It should continue financially. Uh, they should not be dependent on us sending money. Yeah. And the community should be so much, so built that the community itself keeps the work going. Right? They will keep the work going. Leaders are being raised up from that community. Uh, the finances are coming from the contributions in that community. And so the work is continuing to go. So that's our goal. Right? So when we are planting churches or starting ministries, we want to establish self-sustaining communities of believers. So we, our goal is to learn how to do that and what goes into doing that. Right? And uh, we'll just cover one more point and we'll stop. Um, in planting local churches, what are we going to do? We are going to establish God's presence in that community. We want to disciple new believers. So people must be brought into the church and discipled. They should become disciples. Jesus told us to go make disciples. He just didn't say, go gather crowds or go have meetings. He said, go make disciples. So our goal is to make disciples. And the church community must influence its region. They should evangelize. They should make a difference in the place where they are, in the city where they are, or in the region where they are. And they should multiply. They should be able to plant more churches. So we don't want churches that, oh, we're just existing here, we're by ourselves. No, it should multiply. You know, It should be so dynamic, so strong, that they can send out people without losing. You send out people, go start a church, you start a church, you start a church. They should be able to multiply. So that's uh, what we want to see happen in planting these churches. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll pick up from lesson number four, which we're slowly getting into the actual course. Uh, today was like a more of an introduction of things. Uh, any questions before we close? We still have a few minutes. 
Any questions? Okay, let's pray, and uh, then we'll close. Could somebody please pray with us? Father, we thank you for this day, and Lord, thank you for the word that you have given to us, my Father God. Lord, help us to learn more and equip more from the wo your word, my Father God. And I thank you for Pastor, Lord. I thank you for all the faculties, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Man, thank you, everyone. I'll see you again next week. Thank you. God bless.